Hello, my name is Alex, and today I'm excited to announce Retail's new Components feature. Components are reusable subflows you can create once and then reuse across any of the agents within your account. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to get started with Components. We're going to create a first component together, link it to multiple agents, update it, and see the update applied to both, and then test the agent. For our demo today, we're going to implement a new identity component. That's a component that validates who the person who is calling is, clicks their name, date of birth, and email, and we'll inject it into two different flows where we need identity. I'm going to begin by opening up our first conversation flow we want to add this component to. And from here, you'll see a new components tab beside your existing nodes. There are two types of core components. Library components, those are components that can be applied globally to all agents, or agent components, which are components that can only be used within the existing agent. To start using or to create a component, simply click on the plus button beside the relevant component type, or select the component that you want to import. We're going to import our pre-made get user identity component and make some changes to it. With my component added, I'm then going to join it to the node that I want it to connect to, and click on the edit component button. You'll see this opens up the component flow inside of a new tab, and you can always switch between your component tab or your main flow tab via the bottom menu. Now, editing a component flow works the exact same way as you would edit your main flow. Simply drag in different new nodes, update or edit them, and they will then automatically be applied to the agent using that component. You can see in our case here, We've got the first conversation asking for the user's name and date of birth, and then confirm with the user what their name and date of birth is, follow up and ask for their email. And from there, we'll exit the component to continue main flow. Jumping back to the main flow, I'm then going to add a transition to this component. So simply click on the plus button beside the transition. We'll go with the prompt. Let's say user has confirmed their identity. And from there, I'm going to connect that to the rest of my flow. All right, we've got our first component built. Let's test it out. Go ahead and test my agent. Do this over audio. Hello, this is Retail Health Customer Support Department. How can I help you today? Hi, I'd just like to reschedule my appointment. Sure thing. Um, can I just grab your name and date of birth to pull up your appointment details? Sure thing. My name is John, and my date of birth is the 20th of January, 1993. Thanks, John. So just to confirm, your name is John, and your date of birth is January 20th, 1993, right? Could you also give me your email address? Sure. My, name, uh, my email is johndoe at gmail.com. All right, John, I've got your appointment details here. What would you like to change about your appointment? And there we have it. You can see the agent continued through its flow, as it should, but then jumped into that subflow that lives in the component, asked me for my name, date of birth, and email, just as we instructed it to, and beyond that, continued the rest of the main flow as if it was all part of one single system. Now let's go update this component in a different agent, and I'll show you how the update is then applied globally. So when I jump back into this flow post the update, this flow should have the changes that we have added. We're gonna jump into another customer support agent, and here, I'm once again going to go and find my component. So get user identity was the one that we're building. I'm gonna link that up. And I'm gonna edit the component this time from a different agent. So what we'll do is we'll just add an additional step here. For the example, let's do another conversation step and we'll split off asking the name and asking the date of birth in two steps. There we have it, we'll then link them up. Jump back to my main flow. I'm just going to publish this agent here so it has the latest update of our component. Now, if we jump back over to our previous agent that also had that component, and we once again edit the component, we'll see it now has the updated state. Now, this is saved as a draft so it doesn't break any of your agents that are currently live. But if you wanted to update this agent with a new updated component, all you need to do is go ahead and publish. And that wraps up the demo of our first component. Now to recap, in this video, we did a couple of things. We started off by creating our first global component and mapping it or linking it inside of an existing agent flow. We then tested that component and saw that everything inside of the components flow continues naturally for the agent as if it was part of the main flow. We then added that component to a separate agent and made changes in that different agent. And finally, we jumped back to our original agent and saw that the changes we had made had been applied on both fronts. And to make those changes live for both agents, we published both of them. This really is just scratching the surface of what you can do with components. These components can really use any of the functionality you'd have in your existing flow builder. Things like building additional security checks, handoffs to different agents or callers, or even end of flow surveys. Now this concludes our video for today. If there's any questions you have or anything you'd like to see in a future video, please drop it in the comments down below. And I look forward to seeing you live here in a following update.